New Japan Pro Wrestling's Dominion 2022 just finished up a couple of hours ago. And man, what a show we had. What a show we got to take in right now. If this is your first time checking us out. We're the Almighty SOS Wrestling Network. Be sure you like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Tell a friend to tell a friend. The price subscription is free 99. So we had an atten we had a strong attendance number today. One of the highest uh, and I think of the year besides Wrestle King, behind Wrestle King, excuse me, we had an attendance of 6,068 fans in the Osaka. I want to know, was it the Osaka Joe Hall off here? Yeah, it was. This was actually held in Osaka Joe Hall. Of course, the shadow of Osaka Castle is a famous venue for Dominion, what it has been in the past and hopefully will continue to be in said future. So we might as well break into these, break down these matches that we got right here, man. First match we had on the show, we had Hiroshi Tenzan, Master White on Raizuka Taguchi, taking on Aaron Hanari, Francesco Akira, and TJP of the United Empire. The United Empire were joined by, uh, during their entrance by former two-weight class world heavyweight champion boxer Jesse Vargas, and he was announced to be a friend of TJP. So that's no surprise right there. The New Japan Trio was joined by the former IWGP heavyweight champion, Manabu Nakanishi, I can't even say his name, it's been so long since I've seen him. Initially, after having that stuff go on, we get Aaron Hanari getting a pinfall victory over Tenzan, or, or getting the, not the pinfall victory, getting the submission victory, excuse me, via the full Nelson. Uh, this is actually a really good opener. Gave a lot of time to TJP, Mass Wild on Taguchi right here. They had some good stuff right here. I think the finish kind of like let me down a little bit. I kind of, I didn't, I don't expect anybody thought Hanari was going to win this match or get the pinfall, but hey, it is what it was and he got it. So, and him getting the full Nelson pinfall or full Nelson victory here in 2022 seems kind of weird, but I don't know. That's just me. Next match we had, we had Romu Takahashi, Tetsuya Naito, and Bushi of Los Ingobernables Day Upon taking on Taiji Ishimori, Ace Austin, and El Fantasmo representing Bullet Club right here. El Fantasmo got the victory over Bushi via CR2 about eight minutes and four seconds right here. This was a really fun, entertaining tag match. It honestly focused more on shenanigans than it had any seriousness going on. The crowd enjoyed these shenanigans, if you ask me. But even during a section building up Hiromu Takahashi and Taichi Ishimori, they kept the match simple and had much, you know, it had a lot of effort that you would expect out of an LIJ match. And, you know, being in the second tag team match slot, I thought it was okay. They just kept this stuff between Takahashi and Ishimori, I feel kind of brief because this match, of course, is not on this car. It will be here in a couple days, and we'll talk about that when we get to it. So we got Toriano taking on and defeating Doc, Yon, Doc, Doc, Yonos, Doc Gallows around four minutes and five seconds. I love what they did right here. They kept it short, and this is a much better match than I expected right here. It was just basically comedy Yano spots. Gallows, did, he really didn't do a whole lot, but he really didn't have to here. This was really a fun match at times, and it was not anything horrible to sit through. So, I mean, if you're watching the show, I wouldn't necessarily say skip this or, you know, what? I'll just, just enjoy it. This It wasn't a long match at all. Just enjoy the match. So, the next match we had, we had for the Never Open Mate Wait Six Man Tag Team Championships. We had Evil, Show, Yujiro Takahashi, the reigning champions, taking on and defeating the Suzuki Gun Trio of Yoshinobu Kanemaru, Zack Sabre Jr., and El Desperado, they got the victory around 9 minutes and 26 seconds. Yoshinobu Kanemaru got beat by the shock arrow right here. This was a weird match to ask me. It was a mostly, for the most part, I guess I know a lot of people are critical of them, one of the better House of Torture six-man tag team matches they had in a while. Uh, they had Kanemaru pretty much be the legal man for most of this match, and I thought that was kind of a weird story to tell right here. But it actually worked. Um, Kanemaru's performance was really good in this match, and he deserves praise, but... I just kind of felt like a lot of people were maybe shortchanged with, with the lack of El Desperado and Zack Sabre Jr. in this match. But sometimes that's just how story dictates the results in the outcomes of situations. So, yeah, but I can see why people would ultimately be like, well, what's going on here? Next match we have for the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Championships. We have representing the Bullet Club, Fat Luck, Fale, and Chase Owens, the reigning champions, taking on the former champions, Jeff Cobb and Great O'Conn right here. Jeff Cobb was able to pin Chase Owens via the tour of the islands a little under 12 minutes, around 11 minutes, 52 seconds to be exact. This match kind of was slow at some points, and Fale and Owens really controlled the bulk of the offense of this match. They worked over Jeff Cobb a whole lot right here. We get Cobb and Great O'Conn showing their potential at times in this match. But this is probably one of their tag team matches that's on the latter end of the spectrum as far as New Japan goes. So they are the new champions. Let's hopefully they get some momentum under them, some nice needed momentum. And New Japan doesn't cut their legs off from under them like they did their last title reign. So we'll, we have that to look forward to. So 
Then we have the intermission. We got the G1 Climax announced, and it's being announced as the biggest G1 Climax ever. 28 opponents across four blocks right here. So the lineups we get for these blocks, where they didn't really say who's going to be in what blocks, but I think that'll start to unfold as we get it. Kazuchika Okada, Tama Tonga, Hiroshi Tanahashi, Tom Lawler representing in New Japan Strong, making his G1 debut. Jonah representing New Japan Strong, also making his G1 debut. Then we get familiar faces, Yoshihashi, Goto, Toriyano, Tomohiro Ishii. We got the United Empire's Jeff Cobb and the Great Okan. Will Ospreay and Aaron Hari making his debut in G1 Climax right here. Not to be outdone, Los and Gobernables de Hapun will add to the bracket, will add to the to the participants. We have Shingo Takagi, Sanada, and Tetsuya Naito, of course, rounding out the LIJ trio of the G1 Climax. Bullet Club has a couple people in here, right? So we have Jay White, Evil slash, you know, House of Torture, Kenta, Yujo Takahashi, Bad Luck Fale, Chase Owens, Juice Robson, Taichi, of course, representing Suzuki Gun, Zack Sabre Jr. representing Suzuki Gun. They say Lance Archer is AEW, but we all know he's Suzuki Gun through and through. We have El Phantasmo and David Finley making their G1 debuts right here. And then watching the show live, the people who had probably the biggest reactions from the crowd were Kenta, David Finley, Lance Archer, and El Phantasmo. So, with probably the larger pop being for uh, David or Lance Archer in El Phantasmo. So, that's kind of wild because I know people literally, literally hit or miss here or there with El Phantasmo. They're hearing them get that big reaction, that big pop from the crowd talking about, you know, that's actually pretty fine. That's cool to me. So, I, I f and, and, am I happy with the G1 lineup? I think it's a decent lineup. I guess with everything opening up, I maybe was a little bit underwhelmed, and I guess I just kind of let my, you know, imagination run with itself and, you know, thinking who we're going to get, what we're going to get, but I don't think that's really possible right now at this time, so it's it's okay. It's a, we'll, we'll get that stuff soon here in the future, man, but yeah, that's the G1 Climax 28 announcement. Moving on up the card for the interim AEW World Championship challenging match. We have Hiroshi Tanahashi taking on Hiroki Goto right here. Tanahashi got the victory via high fly flow about 12 minutes and 40 seconds. And from their previous encounters, all these wrestling matches that these guys have had, this is maybe, I don't want to say disappointing in like a bad sense, but from what they're accustomed to and what they're capable of, I do kind of feel this match is a little bit disappointing. It did kind of let me down a little bit. So, but that's fair considering where it was positioned on the card here. But I'm always expecting bangers out of Hiroki Goto and Hiroshi Tanahashi. Not saying this match was a bad match, but I'm just used to expecting more from these two. Next, we have the KOPW 2022 Championship Challenge. A 10-minute unlimited pinfall scramble match. Shingo Takagi taking on and getting, getting a victory over Shingo Takagi right here. So... Takagi kicked out at the last pitfall right before the bell went off. He was up 11 to 10. I thought that was kind of a nice little storyline way to mix it up. It's kind of like a sports kind of taste. You're trying to hurry up and score that last point run, whatever it is, to tie it up and send it in overtime. Or should try to get the victory right here. So this is probably one of the better matches of the night, to be real. Taichi and Shingo Takagi have an amazing chemistry. I think they just put on bangers together, and they proved that right here by doing a match that's pretty unconventional. I liked it. I thought this match was pretty solid, man. Moving on. Up the car, we have for the never open weight championship, the reigning defending champion Tama Tonga taking on his former stablemate, former best friend, former buddy, Bullet Club's own, the legendary machine gun Carl Anderson, right here. So, this is a really good heel versus face match, right here. Uh, we have Tama Tonga taking the L to Carl Anderson via gun stun about 16 minutes and 27 seconds, right here. and Anderson, of course, is going to be maybe lost except than he had in his previous New Japan run. Uh, we all know that they had to they had a lot of counter heavy sequences in this match going on right here. Uh, yeah, Anderson was one of probably the top guys as far as New Japan, you know, baby faces in the early 2010s. The paces in this match, in my opinion, could be slow at times, and you know, we get the interference from Doc Gallows here helping Anderson get the victory. This was a, this match was good. I think this match was good by two solid pro wrestlers right here. So nothing more, nothing less. So next we get for the vacant IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship, we have Will Ospreay taking on and defeating Sonata right here. He got the victory via Stormbreaker, 12 minutes and 48 seconds. This is a good action pace match full of athleticism. If that's your thing, you would definitely like this match. So, and it kind of avoided feeling almost mundane and pedestrian at times. And that's kind of a, I feel a thing. Wrestling matches can kind of get lumped into and that's something that can really happen to them. 
Uh, it did feel like they had a lot of flashy spots in here, but you're going to get that for two athletic guys. And we're going to continue with the story with the United States Heavyweight Championship. Let's bring about the IC title already. Let's get rid of the heavyweight, the U.S. title, because it seems like everybody who has it gets injured or, you know, there's something happens or they have to relinquish the belt. So it's this is a constant thing with this belt. And as it shows you, you should have never got rid of the IC title ever. But hey, what do I know, man? I'm just I'm just a wrestling fan talking about pro wrestling. So that is what that is. So. Then in the main event right here for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship, we have Jay White taking on and defeating Kazuchika Okada via the Blade Runner around 36 minutes and four seconds right here. Uh, we got Okada having an amazing, great selling performance right here. We get, of course, some ghetto interference. This match, like I said, went over 35 minutes. Uh, Early parts started kind of slow. I'm not going to hold you. It started kind of slow. Uh, it followed the general structure of Okada match. And it kind of pretty much had the general structure of an Okada J. White match that we've seen in the past. So I thought that was a little bit different. Um, it was a fucking really good match. I wouldn't call this a match of the year candidate by any means. I think the moment is probably greater than the match for you as me. I think you got to take this show as a, 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 as a whole, if you ask me. So we get Jay White winning the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. We get him referencing Hangman Page after the said title win. You know, pretty much talking about where his position is in pro wrestling. So... Thought that was a nice shot right there. And yeah, it was a solid, solid show. It was not a great show. It had a very good main event. And the top four matches, in my opinion, were all entertaining. But those matches also had inherent flaws, if you ask me. They weren't really the most perfect matches you could put on. The undercard, at some points, could be dull and could be a little bit underwhelming. Uh, some of the booking choices were kind of weird, like having Zack Sabre Jr. calling out Brian Danielson after a match where Zack Sabre Jr. didn't even get the tag in. I thought that was a little weird right here. If you've been on the fence about New Japan, this is probably not a show that's going to change your mind. Ultimately, if you enjoy 2022 New Japan, then you enjoy this just like I did right here. So G1 Climax, as I just mentioned, it's a mixed bag. Four blocks of 28 wrestlers will reduce the number of singles matches for each performer, which will also help them from physical uh, from a physical perspective, excuse me, while also helping the fans have fewer matches from wrestlers that they do not enjoy. That said, like I said, the lineup was probably not one that people were waiting for or hoping for. While Lance Archer, he ultimately makes a lot of sense right here, and he was a popular choice based on the crowd reaction. He's not somebody that was on people's lips who was from AEW that was speculating that would be in the G1. So the use of the New Japan strong talent, I think that's a good shot right there. I think that's a great thing to have some of those New Japan strong guys up in here. But I know people were expecting a little bit more, expecting a little bit more bigger names. But like I said, we'll get that at some point, hopefully. So this has been my Dominion Review. We're the almighty SOS Wrestling Network. Be sure you like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Please tell a friend to tell a friend. Price of subscription, as we all know, is free 99 I am the Pro Wrestling Fly God, Stardo Shiaku. Signing off here, man. Getting y'all my New Japan Pro Wrestling Dominion 22 review. I'll be back for, I think it's New Japan Road. I think that's when Hiromu Takahashi's taking on Taichi Shimori for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight title. So until then, y'all peace out. Tranquilo. Adios.